and viewing us. We wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, all the mothers from our English congregation and also the ones in our Spanish congregation. We just want to simply, from the bottom of our hearts, say happy Mother's Day. And today we celebrate you in Jesus' name. There you are. I ask you to raise your hands. There you are. at. And that same power that God has, that has delivered us from many, many, many tribulations, many storms, that same power is alive in us. And it's alive in you today. If you just could only declare it in Jesus' name, say, God, here I am, Jesus. Here I am, God, to exalt you, Jesus, to worship you, God. No matter the circumstances that are going on, we declare your name, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God. We declare your name, Jesus. We declare your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that trumps all roads. There is a notion. Deeper than fear, the tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven. Rushing over us, the tide is rising, rising.
Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. And we ask you for right now, just take a moment right now. Just begin to lift up your hands. And just begin to say, say thank you, Jesus. Today we're celebrating Mother's Day. And there's a special blessing for the mother. God has given them a special purpose for all mothers. And that blessing is just pure love. I truly believe in my opinion that God has a special blessing for all the mothers that are watching us right now. Amongst their families, amongst the churches, their blessing is going to happen right now. And it's going to happen to you too, church. Your blessing can happen right now in the name of Jesus. If you only just, can just trust in him and declare it in him. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
I've always been there, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen, church. God is so good. Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to pick up our, our offering. And I want to remind you that there is four ways to give. There's our church, our mail deposit, cash, check. It's open from Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Also, we have our lobby disc kiosk that's also available here in our church. We also have a form of giving it through online, and that's at www.eapostolic.org. And we also have another form of texting, and the number is 760-301-5998. And we really encourage you, church, to continue to come. If you're bringing your tithing, your offerings on Sunday, continue to come. Our church staff is available here. They're always available to pray for you, you know. Right now is that time. Right now is that time. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait until later. Right now is that time. You can receive your blessing right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, thank you. Make it darker, though the way seems long. You have always been faithful to remind me of your love. My mom inspires me every day to work hard, to never forget where my strength comes from to always do things with a good heart and to never give up. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. My mom inspires me because of her hardworking personality, the way she's able to come home if she's tired or not and still love us the way she does. And I thank her and I love her for implementing that into my own life. My mom inspires me by her strength and the way that she cares for other people. Um, especially those surrounding her. She's always uplifting her family and caring for us and encouraging me in everything that I do. And she shows me how to put the heart of God first and everything else will follow. So thank you, Mom. I love you and happy Mother's Day. My mom simply inspires me by how she worships. She just worships God with all her heart and just makes me just want to worship Him the same way. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. My mom inspires me because she works so hard for her children and so hard to keep a roof over our head and to feed us and, and she keeps
keeps her faith in God. She encourages us too. And she's been our rock. And I love her so much. And I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Praise the Lord, everybody. We want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day on this Sunday. Um, I would like to give a, a, a message this morning, but first of all, I want to thank our pastor, Filimon Anaya, for the opportunity. I want to greet the brothers in Spanish. Yo lo bendiga a todos los hermanos españoles de casa de mi padre. I also want to greet the English ministry. God bless all of you, and we pray that all of you are, are well. I also want to uh, thank a co-worker of mine. Uh, they had me scheduled today to work on a Sunday. I don't know how that happened, but I want to thank uh, CJ for switching with me. Um, instead of me working on Sunday, I worked Saturday, so I want to thank him. I also want to thank Brother Victor and Victor's Drainage and Plumbing that uh, he uh, has been a blessing to help us here at our home. We had some issues and uh, some boys as well that have been there for three, three and a half days in our attic. That's probably been about 120 degrees in there. AJ and Brandon, I want to thank you kids, uh, you know, for helping us. And also some uh, other young men that helped me outside, Justin and Roy and Irwin and Matt. I want to thank you, you boys, for, for helping us as well. Um, in Jesus' name, we, we, uh, I have a short lesson. It's a lesson for all the mothers this morning. If we could just reflect, the topic is a mother's influence. And uh, we just want to, I just want to take time so that way we can understand what the importance of bringing our children up in a godly home, that's the focus. The focus should be to raise them um, in the word and that one day they would be a blessing and used by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we go to the scripture of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. And it says this, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you. And so number one, once again, I want the mother just to give me a few minutes to, to just being able to absorb this and how important it is. So number one, is to instill a respect for Scripture. How important it is to learn about the Bible and teach this to our children. It says, creates a foundation of truth. And let's read the Scripture that's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, from childhood, and they have been given, to, given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. There is a foundation Mothers, we need to create a foundation for our children. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 26, about the foundations. There is the rock and there is the sand. And where are we going to emphasize this to our children? Are we going to emphasize the rock or the sand? The rock is the word and, and, and the sand is being unstable. It's not on the word. And the winds and the storms came and hit that foundation. And great was the fall, the one that was built on the sand. So that's why it's important to create a foundation for our children that we teach them the word. What does it do? It establishes moral absolutes. What does that mean? That means to complete. We want to, we want to complete a journey in our children that every day they are reading the word of God. Internalize. Respect for the scriptures to internalize the knowledge. What is that? It is a structure in their, in their, in their mind, in their heart, from internal to external. 
that they are structuring something that is developing. And before you know it, when they get older, they will know what was taught to them, the Bible, the Holy Bible. So it's important to establish moral absolutes, respect for the scriptures, internalize the knowledge and they're going to start to memorize the scriptures. How many times have we seen in Facebook and, and YouTube and, and even in personal uh, uh, situations that we've seen children memorize the Bible? It's very important that we teach our children the Bible. Instill a respect for scripture. Once again, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 through 15. Listen, mothers. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. How would we feel as mothers this scripture to know that we taught our children from childhood the word of God? And what else does it say? God commands it. It says this in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 7. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands I am giving you today. Repeat them. Listen, mothers. Repeat them again. And again and again to your children. And again and again and again and again. Every single day. Again and again and again. You are repeating them to your children. And the Bible says this. Talk about them when you are at home. And when you are away on a journey. When you are lying down. When you are getting up again. Every time that you have, if it's before you are eating, before you go to bed, soccer practice, uh, uh, play practice, choir practice, if you are able to teach your children about the Bible, you will see the effects when they are older. Praise God. Number two, instill an authentic faith. What is that? Genuine, real. Jesus is real. Amen to that. So it says our children need to come to faith in Christ. Faith is not hereditary. It is to learn. So we must teach our children. When mothers model genuine faith, an environment is created that motivates children to a similar faith. How many times have we heard that mothers before their children go to bed, what do they say? Did you pray? Or more to say, they are there with their children and they tell them, okay, get on your knees, put your hands together and we're going to pray. And there is mommy right next to her daughter or her son. And there they go praying, faith. It is very important and still an authentic faith in them. So there they go. They can't see Jesus. They have a lot of questions, but mom is teaching them that faith to know that Jesus is real. So when they are kneeling down and they are praying, and I, I mean, it, it brings joy and it makes me laugh when the kids, you know, they might be missing some teeth at that moment and they say, thank you, Jesus, for this day. And, and they're going on and it brings a smile to you. But they are praying and they're saying, I love you, Jesus. Help my mommy and help my daddy and help my little cat and help my little doggy and my stuffed animal. And, and the mom is there probably kneeling with them and probably just smiling. But guess what? You are instilling and them faith in Jesus. And every day as they are getting older, they remember that mommy and daddy prayed with them. And they'll never forget that. We are instilling in them faith by reading the scripture and also learning that, you know what, we walk by faith and not by sight. 
Praise the name of Jesus. And so I, I always reflect on that as a, as a little boy that mom and dad always says, hey, don't forget to pray. And I know sometimes it would come and, and just kind of open the door a little bit and make sure, make sure that I was reading my Bible, make sure that I was praying, clapping my hands at church. Why do we clap our hands? Why do we raise our hands? And we're teaching them, we're teaching them faith that Jesus is real. Praise God. And it says this. Once again, mothers, listen. A mother's priority, pri priorities, here we go. I'm not even going to talk about this. I want you to preach to yourself, and I want you to think about these because these are very important. Number one, it says, her children's souls versus their clothes. Think about that. What's more important? Her children's souls versus their clothes. Her children's eternal life versus success in life. Her children's relationship with Jesus versus popularity in the world. Her children standing with God versus their social status. Her children's spirituality versus their intellectual, musical, or athletic accomplishments. And most of all, prayer. Prayer is so very important. There's some scriptures in the Bible that talk about the mother of John Mark opening her home for prayer while Peter was imprisoned. When Peter was in prison, the mother of John Mark opened her home and they were praying for Peter. And mothers are pillars of prayer in their homes. That not only do they teach their children, but they also teach others and they open their homes to the sisters of the church and their neighbors to be able to come and to pray. Mary, the mother of Jesus, joined together constantly in prayer with the disciples. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14, you will read about that. How important is to teach our children how to pray. What is more important, to teach them how to pray or the things of this world? It is so very important to teach our children to pray. And all of those priorities, mothers, you can preach to yourself and you can look at them. You can accomplish all kinds of things in life, young man, young lady. I remember that I thought one day I would become a professional soccer player. And my father and my mother supported that, but they also supported to say, never ever forget the things of God. And I didn't listen completely, and some things happened in my life, and thank God that they did, and thank God the prayers of my mother. And here I am standing before you because of my mother and my father. So remember, Prayer is important for our children. Also, instill a desire to minister. Paul and Silas, they met up with Timothy, a young disciple whose mother was a Jewish believer, but whose father was a Greek. And in that place that Timothy was, they known uh, Timothy as a believer. But this is very important. Acts chapter 16, verse 1 through Three, you can read that. But this is, this is very important. And it says at that last part on verse three, it says, so Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. As we teach them the word of God, as we teach them about faith in our homes, wherever we go at all times, one day, one day, they're going to be ministering. They're going to have a ministry and somebody is going to take them under their wing. Just like it says, as Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. Three qualities passed down from mother to son. Timothy was a strong believer. He is referred to as a disciple. Timothy had a good reputation. Timothy was available. Commitment to ministry does not develop if it is not encouraged at home. Mother, as you pray with your children, 
as you instruct them in the word and in their faith, one day as they grow to be that young woman and that young man, there are going to come pastors and co-pastors and assistant pastors and, the, and the, the head usher and the children ministry and the junior ministry leaders and the youth leaders. And they're going to look at those kids and they're going to say, you know what? I want that one. I want that one. And I want that one because they have a good spirit. Where did they get that from? Where? Where did they get it from? As right now, as I I, as I told you before I even started, that there were some young men that have helped me at my home. Let me tell you something. For those young men to be in the attic for three days and a half, it tells you a lot. They weren't cussing. They weren't yelling. They weren't knocking on my walls and pounding the ground. And they, they weren't upset at me. They were up there and they wanted to serve the man of God. And I thank the Lord for their parents their mothers, because they were taught right. They have a good spiritual life. And those that helped me out, they didn't complain. They were out there in the hot sun helping me, working. Pastor Anaya was out there giving orders. Hey, you, come over here. And it was funny because he would get one young man, hey, and he would just go like this, and here they come. And then he would tell them to cut it, and there they go, cut it. He would call another one, hey, you, and hey, right away. And they were obedient. But where did they learn that from? They learned that from their mother and their father in their homes. And I thank all of you mothers and fathers that these young men that I mentioned, I want to thank you because you did do it right. And so it says this, one day, one day, your son or your daughter is going to have a ministry and you're going to look back of what you created, the time that you took. And your son might be an evangelist. Your daughter be married to a, a, a pastor, be a Sunday school teacher. How proud would you be instead of being on the streets? Instead, you would have to go to the prison to visit your daughter or your son because something happened or they're living on the streets you don't want that as a mother, but you want to know that they're serving God and that they're doing something very special. I like to read this saying that says this. It says, my mother, my mother, your love I know. I've seen your tears. You've given to me my life. You've walked through hours and days and years of heartache, toil, and strife. To see that I could have the best that you could give to me. You gave up needs and often rest. You, you viewed eternity to do his will, my highest call. And by your special care, I stood and walked and did not fall. You held me up in prayer. Though strands of gray may brush your hair and miles divide our way. I know that by your quiet prayer, you've helped me day by day. You've shown me how to give, to share, to put my own needs last. You've helped me to see and be aware that life is so soon past. To spite your love, I would not dare. For there's not another who spreads her gentle love and care like you, my loving mother. How special is that going to be when your children are all grown up and they're going to reflect and they're going to appreciate you and love you even more as the days go? Why? Because you instructed them the right way. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28, her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her listen this one's important proverbs chapter 31 verse 30 charm is deceptive and beauty does not last but a woman who fears the lord will be greatly praised 
I encourage you mothers this morning to thank God for the children that he has given to you. God has blessed you in a mighty way. And today I stand in front of you because I am a son. I'm a pastor. I say that with humbleness. God has brought me to this day because of my mother and my father. And I appreciate them. Just like the grandmother Lois and the mother Eunice brought, their, brought her son Timothy up to become a disciple. So has my mother. My grandmother used to go to the ranches when they were working in the fields. And she would pick up the people that were working in the fields. And they would find a location. And in those days, my grandmother, she was the MC. She didn't need a mic. A lot of you know my grandmother. Um, but man, she would get her famous tambourine and she'd be singing songs and hit that tambourine on the side and she would sing the songs and my grandfather would preach the word of God. That's where it started. And my grandmother taught my mother and my mother taught me. Today, I have something special. I have this. This is a little Bible. I don't even know if they sell these anymore, but this is the Bible that my mother gave me, and I have it today. I remember reading this Bible, and my favorite, it has a couple of pictures, didn't have a lot of pictures, but when I would open it, I would always like to see the picture, and I know you won't be able to see it from there, but anyways, David and Goliath. And you see the picture there. I know it's from a distance. But, man, I used to like looking at that because as I, as I was a kid and my mom and dad were teaching me, I thought, man, you know what? I, can, I get to knock down giant people. Hallelujah. I get one of a rock or something and hit them just like David did. And I would look at that picture all the time. But this is the Bible that my mother bought me when I was a little boy. And I want to thank you, Mom on this Mother's Day for bringing me up, for teaching me the Bible, for teaching me about faith, and that one day I would be able to minister. And here I am standing because of you and Dad. I love you guys. I love you, Mom. I thank you. And I know that there are a lot of young men and young ladies out there that are hugging their mothers and thanking them for everything that they have done. Thank you. And most of all, I want to thank my beautiful, wonderful, excellent wife. She has been a blessing to me. She has done great things. We could always reflect and say, oh, man, she's a good cook, and she washes clothes. And No, I don't want to even talk about that. that, that she already does that. I want to thank her for that. But what I want to thank God is that God blessed me with a godly woman. She is tremendous. She loves God with all her heart. And not just to me that she comes and she prays and she loves me, but she loves her children. She has instilled in our children the Bible, faith, and ministry. And look at our kids now. My, my daughter is married to a godly man, and I want to thank his parents and his mother for bringing him up correctly. He's, he's, he's uh, uh, taking care of my daughter. He's a very good young man. And my daughter is helping me on the praise team, and she loves God. But where did she get that? And now my son, he's going to college. He's helping us with editing here in the church. He loves Jesus. He does his devotional every day. But where did he learn that? Where did my daughter learn that? From mommy. From mommy. So, babe, I want to thank you for being that godly woman. God has blessed not only me, but our children as well with a beautiful, wonderful, godly mother. I love you, and I thank you for everything. And some mothers might say right now, well, man, where does that leave me? Because I really haven't done that. It's never too late to change. Never. As long as you can breathe, 
the air, you have opportunity. You can change today. You can make that commitment and say, you know what? I'm going to gather my kids. I'm going to start learning how to pray. I'm going to start teaching them. It does not matter how old they are. You still can do it because Jesus is able to do what is impossible for man is not impossible for God. That is scripture. God can help you. And I pray for you that God will turn your home around and put it on solid ground on the word of God. So we love you and we thank you for everything. The English ministry have something that they would like to present, a short clip to, to my wife. You're going to see that. But thank you very much for everything. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy this day. God bless you.